play with me? Sure. What you playing? These, these dinosaurs. Oh, we're playing dinosaur candy land? Yeah. Which one are you going to be? I'm Long Neck. Long Neck? Or the Tobogo. Oh, we're supposed to have a little ball? How many spaces do you go? One. I win! You won? Yeah! Already? Well, that was fun. Mm -hmm. Now it's your turn. <laughs> oh, it's my turn. Let's see if I can win. You won blue. Does that mean I won? Yeah! Oh, yay! We both won. That looks good, Jonah. Then you take these two ends and fold in first and fold up this way. You got it kind of full, so it might be a little... Oh, that's gonna go. You want to cut on the slant? Yeah. There you go. Welcome back everybody. Let me shut this laundry room door because the dryer is loud. I'm just happy it's working though, y'all. And you know what? After Titus fixed that dryer, it was getting really hot, but it still wasn't drying the clothes. And I noticed that the lint trap, for some reason, it wasn't collecting the lint on the right side. It was trying to be on the you know other side of it. And even though the dryer was getting really, really hot, like hotter than it did, it wasn't drying the clothes. So I told Titus about it and he was like, okay, something must be crossed up in the back. So he had to take it back out again and two wires, he switched them and then it worked again. So I'm not sure why. I think maybe the blower, he said something about it was making it blow in the wrong direction or something like it was, should have been going, I don't know. Just wanted to let y'all know if you end up having to change your heating element in your dryer and it's getting hot now, but still not drying the clothes for some reason, that's the problem. Two wires crossed up because it was still getting really hot. It was just weird that it would not dry the clothes. Anyway, it is Monday afternoon. We just got finished with schoolwork and snack time. Got all that stuff cleaned up. I had a bunch of things that I had to seal. And now, before we go outside for a little bit, because it is very pretty out there today, we're gonna go ahead and start supper and I'm gonna make a lemon meringue pie. So tomorrow is Valentine's Day and Titus mentioned one day last week, he asked me how long does it take to make a lemon meringue pie. And I said it doesn't take long to make it, but it has to sit for a long time, you know, before you can cut it. So we're making him a lemon meringue pie for Valentine's Day. We're gonna go ahead and make it today. That way it'll be ready for tomorrow or it'll probably even be ready tonight and he might eat a piece of it tonight, we'll see. For this one, I'm just making the normal lemon meringue pie. I do have a three layer lemon meringue pie that's my favorite, but Titus likes just this regular one better. But I'll link the video down below if y'all want to see the three layer one. You can use an already baked pie crust. I've got something sticky on my hands. Let me wash my hands real quick. So yeah, you can use a pre-baked pie crust because the filling doesn't need to be put in the oven. We're going to cook it on the stove top. The only thing we're going to put it in the oven for is the meringue. If you don't like meringue, because I know a lot of people don't like it, you can make whipped cream to go on top instead. Or you can just eat it without anything on top. I need to let this come to room temperature before I try to put it in the pie plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the beans in the Instant Pot. For supper tonight, we're just having beans and cornbread. And I'm still trying to decide if I wanna do mashed potatoes or fried potatoes. And most of the time, if I do fried potatoes, I would do biscuits instead of cornbread. So still trying to figure out which one of those I wanna make. This is a four pound bag, so we're just gonna be using half of this today. I'm gonna put them in here so I can rinse them. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put a little fat back in the bottom here. Let me see if I still have some. I think I do. Yes, we do. I'm probably just gonna put all of this in there. It's not that much. Still have some dishes to wash over here, but I wanted to get this stuff started. So all fat back is, is just like a really salty cut of pork. And when I use this, I don't put any salt or anything in here with the beans, just the fat back. And they'll have lots of flavor. You can put some onion in too if you want to. I mean, you can do whatever. You can do whatever you wanna do with your beans. This is just how I do it. I, when I use fat back, I just do the fat back. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a little stir. 
Okay, now we'll get our pie crust in the oven. All of my pie plates are Christmas, so doesn't matter though, it's red. When the pie's in it, you won't be able to tell it's Christmassy. <laughs> Okay, the first thing we need to do is zest these two lemons and juice them. That way when we get to the part where we add this, we already have it ready. Okay, in this pot, we're gonna put one cup of sugar, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and three tablespoons of cornstarch, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Do you wanna mix this, Sissy? I thought she wanted to mix it, but then she disappeared. <laughs> They're upstairs playing, here she comes. You wanna mix it? Okay, you mix that, and I'm gonna get the other stuff. We're gonna need one cup of water. Here comes the water. Half a cup of milk. Now we put in the lemon juice from those two lemons and the lemon zest. All right, now I'm gonna turn this on to medium and we're gonna bring this to a bowl. I'm gonna get two tablespoons of butter ready and four egg yolks. We're gonna save the whites though because we'll need those for the meringue. go ahead and drop in the butter. When this comes to a bowl, we'll take about a fourth of a cup of this mixture out and put over here in with the egg yolks to temper them. Then we'll add them in. crust is done so we're just gonna pour this straight in we don't have to wait on it to cool because they're both hot right now anyway all right so I'm just gonna let this sit here and cool while I wash up all these dishes then we'll make the meringue I still have the oven at 350 once we get the meringue made this just has to go in there for about 10 minutes after we put it on you got a what germ -flop. did Jonah tell you it looks like a germ yeah Look at my toes. Let's see those toes. <laughs> okay, now for the meringue, we have our egg whites in there. We're putting in about six tablespoons of sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and start this and then I'll drop in a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, we've got the meringue on there. Now if you want the peaks, just take the back of the spoon, kind of press just a little bit and pull up quickly and you'll get some pretty peaks. Now this is gonna go in the oven just for about 10 minutes just until the meringue starts to brown on top. And I am gonna put it on a baking sheet because it'll be a little easier to get out. Since I'm having to keep my eyes on this meringue anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the cornbread. Now we're just gonna make some fried okra and I'm gonna slice up an onion, tomato, and cucumber. 